Have you signed up for my sex meditation subscription yet? If not, you should, because I cover a wide range of topics to help you overcome your sex challenges. These topics range from dick appreciation, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, sexual frustration. There are visualization practices based on how you want to start seeing sex to feel more pleasure. Um, how to work through maintaining stronger erections, how to use dirty talk, building sex confidence, an exercise for Kegels, and more. So go to the link in the description of this podcast and sign up for Sex Meditations today. I hope it helps you overcome your sex challenges and reprograms your mind to, to start feeling good about sex and actually feeling that it's this way to receive pleasure and connection and have fun. Welcome to What I Love About Sex, where some incredible guests and I, Steph Kanowski, will be bringing you the tools for improving your sex life with topics such as sex issues with your partner, sexual self-confidence, premature ejaculation, sexual shame, masturbation, sharing your fetishes, orgasmic pleasure, and more. Sex is still so taboo, and I personally believe that by improving our understanding and communication skills around sex, we can enhance our own self-pleasure as well as deepening our long-term romantic relationships. So listen in, try to stay open-minded, and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on the What I Love About Sex podcast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about sex confidence. What is sex confidence? What is sexual confidence? You know you want it, but you may not be sure exactly what it means. And it will mean something different to everyone. So you have to get clear on what does it mean to you? And what do you think it feels like? Or how do you think it would feel different if you did have more of it? Because something I see often is, or hear often from clients and men who I speak to on intro calls is, I want to be sexually confident. And I'll say, well, what does that mean? And I just feel better about my sex life. So let's read a definition here. Sexual confidence refers to a person's level of self-assurance and comfortability with their own sexuality and sexual experiences. It encompasses a range of attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that contribute to a positive and fulfilling sex life. When someone is sexually confident, they feel empowered and secure in expressing their desires, boundaries, and preferences without shame or fear of judgment. So what I see in this most, this definition, which is... uh, from ChatGPT. Thank you, (laughs) ChatGPT. Shout out to ChatGPT. But what I see here is vulnerability and authenticity and being genuine when it comes to sexual beliefs or expression or understanding. And I think that men especially have a really hard time being vulnerable, which means opening themselves up to potential rejection by sharing their true desires, by sharing their true beliefs, by focusing on or exploring an area of their body that they've never explored because what if that's weird to, to do that with her? Like what if it's weird to pay attention to himself or feels uncomfortable or it's awkward if he were to get out of the habit of fucking like a porn star? You know, if he were to try something different, it's scary. If he was to have a conversation he's never had in his life, it's scary because men often feel like they have to take the lead on things. And if they're new at something, there's a level of insecurity around that. And admitting that insecurity is difficult. It is. It's very difficult if you're not used to doing that. But once you get in a habit of doing it and you realize, hey, I don't know everything and everything takes practice because most things are a skill set, including sex. You know, when you give yourself that break and that relief from putting so much pressure on yourself to to know everything and be able to do everything and be rock hard 24-7, like when you let go of this pressure, you're able 
to access your sex confidence because you're able to ask questions to your partner and to yourself, right? You're able to actually get a deeper understanding of who you are as a man, what you really want, the type of partner you want, and how to give your partner the best pleasure based on the questions you can ask. You can explore that whole area of sex confidently, like feeling good about it and doing it effectively if you're holding back. So you can have both. And a good reminder is it takes courage to be vulnerable. Vulnerable and courage go hand in hand. So I want you to think about what it means for you to be a courageous man in every aspect of your life. And what that looks like to me is a man who is able to say like, hey, this is, I keep thinking about this during sex. I'm not sure why. Um, It's making me feel a little weird. And I just wanted to talk to someone about it because I'm not sure how to interpret it. Or I'd love some feedback. I'd love some perspective. You know, when clients open up to me like that, or they say like, I have this thought, it makes me feel really bad. I feel shame around it, but I need to tell someone and they tell me, I notice that active courage because I know that's not easy for them. And I know that it's going to make them better and more comfortable with sex overall because they've opened up and addressed that issue. But if you keep pushing down issues and you're never talking to anyone and you're never getting help and you're never getting curious about it, you just keep trying to push it away, it's going to keep coming back. You can't just push it away and expect it to leave and for your mind to be clear. There's always going to be that thing that keeps popping up until it's dealt with, until it's understood. Okay, so um, going back to this definition of sexual confidence, I, I like the part where it says where someone is sexually confident, when someone is sexually confident, they feel empowered and secure in expressing their desires, boundaries, and preferences without shame or fear of judgment. Something you guys really have to understand is that not every woman is going to be into what you're into. And that's okay. I know in porn, every woman in a porn is into what the guy does, right? And she's getting wet from it and she's coming from it. Apparently, she's really not. But, you know, it's it's not going to... It's okay if you're on different levels. It's okay if you have different boundaries, right? It's okay if you desire different things. And that's why we ask these questions to our partner because we realize that even the best partners in our life, even if you're in a long-term relationship and it's going well, it's going amazing and it's 20 years in, right? 30 years in. Um, if you feel like oh, we have differences, like that's okay. As long as you talk about them and you understand them and you can find a way to work with them. Differences are good. So there doesn't have to be a fear around that. And as long as you don't judge your partner and you create a space where you can both talk about these things, then there also won't be judgment because you'll have laid down the ground rules for how conversation will go. And that's what I tell guys also when they're afraid of having sex communication. Um, they're afraid of having commun- they're afraid of talking about sex, right? Or they don't know how to start. And the best place to start is to have some sort of guideline or framework for you going into the conversation so that you both know what you're getting into. And for you to understand this before going into a sex conversation is super important because it will either go down the effective route of communication or it will go down the ineffective route. And most men go down the ineffective route and lose confidence sexually because they talk in circles or they talk until an insecurity comes up and then they shut down. And that insecurity comes up faster than you think um, for most men. And for example, something, um, it could sound like this. You're talking about sex with your partner and you're like, and, and maybe it starts off strong and you're like, babe, I really love to talk to you. 
about our sex life. I feel like we haven't talked about our romantic relationship in a while, and I think it would be really helpful if we did. And she's like, okay, like, what's what's up? What do you want to talk about? And you're like, I, I feel like the frequency is way off in terms of how much I want it versus how much you want it, and I want to understand why. And she's just like, well, I don't know. And then you get frustrated with the I don't know because you don't know what to say next. You don't know how to respond to I don't know. So you respond with frustration and you're like, well, you need to know. You need to tell me, right? And your tone changes, your expectations change. You come about with this frustration and it's stemming from an insecurity. It's stemming from a, I don't know how to respond to I don't know. And I feel like I should, but I don't or I can't. And now you're reacting with anger in a frustrating tone. So, and then she's saying, all right, I'm not doing this. And she walks away. All right, so in this case, neither partner is a good, effective communicator around the topic of sex. It's obvious that this specific partnership example needs some practice. And that's simply what they need. They need practice and they need to be willing to have conversations around this topic, but they're not. So this is many relationships. And you can't allow a response like that to shut you down and stop you from getting the answers you need or or taking away your confidence all right so an example like this the same example let's use the same example with a man who does feel confident around responding to the answer i don't know right because i'm sure a lot of you guys are in this boat and so let's get back into it so she says you say i feel like the frequency is really off I want sex a lot more than you do, and I want to understand why. And she goes, I don't know. And you're like, okay. Um, So I don't know makes it a little difficult for me to respond or engage in a conversation with you. Like, do you want me to help give you some ideas as to maybe what it is? And she's like, okay, sure. And you're like, what about... um, are you enjoying our sex? Like, is there something about it that makes you not want it every time that I want it? Um, I don't know. I guess it's okay. Okay. Well, what would make it, what would make it a little bit better? What do you think? I don't know. And then you're like, okay, so let's try to move past the, I don't know. And just one answer is all I need. What do you think would make it a little bit better? Do you think it would be better if we spent more, if we had more date nights like we used to? Would that help build connection between us? Yeah, probably. I do miss our date nights. Yeah, I miss our date nights too. Okay, let's, let's try to schedule that in the calendar so that that's a priority between us. I know it's been really tough with the kids. But even if we do a date night at home and we just put the kids to bed early and we have a plan, that, that would probably work out, right? Like we could, we could try. We could do our, the best job possible with that. Okay, yeah. All right, what about like the timing of how we usually have sex? Do you think that might be something that gets in the way? Okay, et cetera, et cetera. See how I took the conversation and steered it in a way that got an answer. When, when the I don't know hit, the confident man in this example was able to call out that I don't know does not provide any answer and that he's looking for an answer and he wants to help her. The tone stayed calm and he stayed curious because he wasn't afraid of the I don't know. He didn't feel like the I don't know was something he just had to know, like he had to know this question. And now that she says, I don't know, he doesn't know how to handle it. Yeah, you know how to handle it. You just call out the fact that I don't know is simply not giving an answer. And that you would really like to have an answer to help the two of you move forward and improve your relationship together. When you back it up with good intent, when there's good intention behind what you're asking and there's a a loving empathetic tone that comes with it for both people. I'm not saying this is just for the man. When both people communicate this way, you open up opportunity for growth 
or understanding or perspective. All three, actually. Because you see that, okay, we're doing this because we love each other. We're not doing this because we're frustrated and we're upset with each other. You may be frustrated. You may be upset. But the main intention is I want this to work because I care about you. That's the main. And if that's the main rooted intention, you're much more likely to lead with the curiosity and be like, all right, babe, see how the I don't know just doesn't it doesn't give an answer, right? And I know sometimes this stuff can be confusing, but like, are you open to me helping you out and give me, giving you some examples? Because I think I might know why you're not so into sex or I have a few ideas. So you're opening, you're able to give her those ideas because you've thought it through. You've actually brainstormed this before you brought up the conversation. And you providing examples for her will also help her start brainstorming a topic that she might be seriously uncomfortable with. You think you're uncomfortable? Sometimes your partner's more uncomfortable talking about sex, right? So it's like, and, and typically it's the one who's not having much sex. And when you're trying to understand this, it does help to give examples and remind her of your intention and keep your tone in a loving, empathetic place so that your confidence remains high, okay? Because she's more likely to respect you and listen to you if you are coming from a place of, hey, I love you, I I really am wanting to get answers, and are you open for me to help you out here? Yes, okay, here are some things I'm thinking. Could this be true about you? So you're not assuming, you're not saying, I think it's this, because I thought about it. You're saying, Hey, I think I have a few ideas that it might be this. Are you open to hearing them? And that involves her in the conversation also. So now she actually knows your intention is that you love her. She feels like you're a team, like you're working together on this because you're asking her questions and you're helping her find answers that she's terrified of finding, right? And you're doing this together. That is a strong man. That is a courageous man. That is a man who takes the lead on a problem in his life and doesn't give up until he gets some sort of answer. That is confidence. Okay. So I hope that example helped a lot of you because I know that a lot of you guys are hit with the I don't know and it's super frustrating. I get it. I would be frustrated if I had a partner who constantly told me I don't know. Trust me, I would. But this is going to be the best um the best place to start and give this an attempt, give this a try, okay? So before diving into the, the major, the key aspects of sexual confidence, I want you to check out this clip of a sex meditation I've created around sexual confidence because I got a ton of requests to put this topic in my sex meditations to help you guys improve your sex confidence and use it as a reflective tool So check out a clip of it here. Do you understand your own sexual preferences? What do you enjoy during sex? What do you desire? What really gets you going? Think of at least three things. And I want you to Make two of these three things about you, not about doing something to her, but about receiving. Good. What about when it comes to communicating your sexual needs? Can you do this effectively? And if not, what's getting in your way? Sexual self-confidence has a lot to do with self-expression, especially when it comes to expressing to your partner what your desires are and how you want them played out. So think about how this is going for you right now and what would be the next step for you to 
be able to communicate this effectively. Okay, cool. Coming back, I'm going to go over the key aspects of sexual confidence. Um, the first I want to talk about is self-acceptance, which is being comfortable in your body and your sexual identity, regardless of the expectations of norms, right? Social norms. So self-acceptance and comfort in your body is a big one. I actually have a meditation around this too, where it's like, if you have body insecurities, I have a meditation to help you overcome those insecurities and also put more focus and attention on the parts of your body that feel really good for you um, and that you've always enjoyed or that you've always appreciated because we tend to put those parts of us aside and zoom in on what makes us feel not so attractive and we're worried about it and then if that steers if that insecurity steers where we're at when it comes to sex in terms of like steers our mindset then we're going to be anxious and we're going to be overthinking about things that our partner's probably not even noticing or paying attention to and we're just zoned in on it and it's ruining our experience and when it ruins our sexual experience it ruins our connection between us and our partner so it's really important to Learn to accept the parts of your body that you're not so comfortable with. Find a way to accept them and find a way to more so appreciate the parts of your body that you do feel really good about and proud of and enjoy and have always felt just good or even felt great about it. Okay, so definitely um, taking time to reflect on this is important because body image does not only you know impact women, um, it also is a major plays a major role in men, especially when it comes to your penis. All right, so another point of sex confidence you want to be aware of is is, um, communication. And this is one we just talked about, right? Like to be confident talking about sex openly and honestly and admitting when you don't know the answer, um admitting when I don't know as an answer is frustrating and that it like letting your partner know what your intention is being able to communicate boundaries when something is done um, sexually that you don't want to repeat of or you never want to happen Um, even boundaries in general communicating boundaries all over because that's just one of the most important skills that I believe especially men need to practice I mean everyone does not just men but um but being able to say what you desire and what you want what you want to try and also be honest about what's what are things that pull you in the opposite direction you know like what are things about your partner that Maybe their behaviors or a certain way she speaks to you. Like, do you call her out on those things? Do you stand up for yourself when you're feeling, um, not just, this isn't about feeling just emasculated because that's how you interpreted it, but if you are being yelled at or you're being spoken down to, belittled, do you call attention to that and say, hey, I love you, but this is not, a way that a couple speaks to each other or not the relation not the the relationship that I'm in or that I want to be in there's no talk like this between each other let's try that again you know like and and really mean it like let's try that again together not like being sarcastic to her or trying to be you know wise smart ass Um, So when it comes to doing things like this, setting boundaries and speaking up for yourself, you also have to make sure that you're not belittling your partner. Because sometimes in communication, when you're being hit with that type of communication and you don't like it, you tend to do it back. So if it's become a habit and she does it, you can't just, you know, set a boundary with her and never acknowledge that you've been doing it. You have to call attention like, hey, I realize we've been talking down to each other lately and it's that's not fair to us and I don't think I don't know about you I mean I'm pretty sure I know about you because I married you and I'm with you or whatever um but I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who speaks down to me and I don't want to speak down to my partner and I know that I've been doing that 
and I'm ready to stop. And I want you to call me out whenever I'm doing that. And I would, I would love the freedom to call you out too. What do you think? See, that's a conversation that's difficult because it's like, hey, I am admitting I'm messing up or I've been messing up. We've both been messing up in terms of the partnership we said we wanted to have. How about we fix it together and call each other out and hold each other accountable to this new form of communicating, which is with love and respect, not belittling and judgment. So you're putting everything out on the table and you're acknowledging, hey, let's work on this together. How about I call you out, you call me out? And that can sound like, hey, babe, I'm feeling belittled right now. We talked about not doing this anymore, remember? So see how that can be a tough conversation, but at the end of the day, it's very clear in terms of moving forward, what are we going to do different so we could stop this behavior and we could be a more loving, connected, teamwork type of partner. That's so important, guys. And I see this in long-term marriages a lot where you just get to the point where you're so comfortable that you call each other names and um, you just become cruel to each other when you're frustrated or upset. And I had a client recently who him and his wife caught this and they were like, you know, we've been realizing we've been using more name calling and just more anger in our voice and we want it to stop. Like it's not okay. And he acknowledged with me right away when we first started working together that that was not okay to continue he didn't like it and it was growing in the wrong direction and by the end of our time working together he was very intentional on pulling back on that and having a talk with his wife and she agreed and they worked on it to the point where there is not name calling maybe once in a while like a little bit tiny bit compared to where they were but they've made massive improvement because they took it on together and they acknowledged it together So when you could do that with your partner, confidence rises. Confidence in you and confidence in your partnership. Okay, another point of confidence is knowledge. So knowledge in the sense of having an understanding of your sex life. Um, Your sex life, your, your body, what your body wants. Are you exploring yourself? You know, like how often are you trying new things? Um, How often are you really asking questions about the techniques you're using with your partner? Are they working? Are you just assuming that because she makes a a noise that sounds like she's orgasming? Do not simply trust the sound of an orgasm. Because orgasms are very easy for women to replicate and fake. Very easy. You may think, no, her body was shaking. No, she was super wet. No, I know what her orgasm sounds like. No, you don't know. (laughs) You don't know. There are way too many women faking orgasms and men think they're 100% certain she's not and she is. Trust me. Trust me. Just a quick break here to remind you guys to leave a rating and review for this podcast on Apple or Spotify. I would love to hear from you. And if this has provided you insight, given you clarity, helped you in your relationship, helped yourself have a better understanding of sex or experience more pleasure during sex, let me know by writing a review. It would be awesome and I would appreciate a star rating as well. Love you guys and let's continue to the episode. Talk to her. Make sure you're having these conversations. Do not assume because assuming makes you feel as though you know what you're doing, but deep down, you know, you're not 100% certain because you have not heard it from the source. The source is her. That's it. She's the only one who could give you the, the right answers here. So until you talk to her and you ask her specifics, you don't fully know. And that insecurity deep down will always lie within you until you start communicating and asking her just as she should be asking you or just as you should be opening up to her about what's really pleasurable for you or maybe what she's doing to your dick that you hate. (laughs) Like you have to speak up. You know, she's using teeth whenever she goes down on you and that's hurting you. It's making you get turned off by her. It's worsening your connection. It's making you not want head and you used to love head. You got to speak up. You have to speak up and let her know a technique that works for you without making her feel like shit. You know, hey, babe, can you do it more this way? Yeah, I love when you did it. You know, you did it the other day and it was like with a a tongue, tongue, 
<laughs> a tongue of tongue, a ton of tongue <laughs> wrapping around the top. And then, you know, you, you sucked and made sure you didn't get any teeth in the mix, like blah, blah, blah. You know, there are ways to explain it without being like, babe, you use way too much teeth. It's like, it's painful. You know, we want to get our partner feeling comfortable with our feedback. And like I said, you do that in a loving, empathetic tone and you are honest so that your partner knows, hey, I know that he's honest because whenever there's something that comes up, he shares it. So that trust within the partnership grows when you're honest and you're having sex conversations about the hard stuff. Because then your partner knows, right? If anything is wrong, my partner's going to bring it up because that's what we do. If you never bring this stuff up, there's always going to be an insecurity, a fear, a doubt, a shame that's lurking around your relationship on both parts because it's like, all right, things can't always be perfect. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, Why do we never talk about anything that's not going so well? Like, Why do we never call out when something's not great or when something's awkward? If there's an elephant in the room in your relationship, there's a lack of trust, most likely. So you got to get comfortable calling out those elephants in the room and being honest about what you want and calling your partner out when necessary. All right. And your communication confidence, your confidence actually will skyrocket with this one. This is probably the most important one, sex communication. All right. Um, Oh, wait, we were talking about knowledge. <laughs> we were done with communication. But, you know, I referred back to communication. So knowledge is what comes from communicating, all right? It also comes from you reading some books to get other insight. Sex is a skill, guys, and a lot of you forget that. You think, oh, well, I'm a man. I should be good at sex. I should know exactly what to do. I should be able to please any woman and my dick should always work the way I want it to work. I should always feel a level of control. I should never be sucked in by porn in a, in a way that's detrimental to my relationship or my penis. I should be able to jerk off and have a ton of ejaculation and and um, just have it all over the place, dripping down from the walls. Like, <laughs> like no, no. You need to learn your body and sometimes that means picking up a damn book and sometimes that means talking to friends and sometimes that means talking to your partner and that means exploring your body and masturbating and thinking about different things to explore your different arousals in terms of your, your mental state and jerking off in a different way physically, using different techniques, trying different lubes, trying different positions with your partner, trying different speeds. When you're not doing this stuff, you're not learning. You're not learning about yourself. If you're just watching a porn and replicating the porn over and over and over, you're not learning anything. And you're, you're going to feel lost and you're going to feel not so connected to your partner. You're not going to feel so into sex. Your libido will go down. You know, some guys just think this is all just a hormonal thing where their testosterone's fucked up. No, if you have lack of an understanding around sex, you will avoid it, especially as a man. You will just... Avoid it because you're like, all right, I feel like I should know this. I don't. Therefore, I'm not going to do it as much. I'm going to do the things that I know I'm good at. Okay, so then learn this. Work on it as the skill that it is. We all have to work on sex. We can't expect to be great or to have great communication unless we start practicing. That's the only way. Knowledge is important. All right. And then another part <laughs> to confidence is um, vulnerability. We touched on this. And vulnerability is all about being able to share those intimate feelings with a partner. And this, just to, I, we went into it, but to touch on this a little deeper is to bring up the fact that this leads to deeper connection. Because going back to the idea that when you're honest and upfront with your partner always, whenever you need to be, then your partner starts trusting that you will be that way. Your partner starts understanding, okay, when something's off, my partner comes to me and they let me know and we have a conversation. You know, when there's that feeling, it's a very secure feeling. It's a very safe feeling for you and for her. If you have that between the two of you where you're vulnerable and you're like you're open and sh about sharing things that are really 
on your mind that maybe you don't feel great about or you're embarrassed to share, or you feel weird sharing or you have shame, whatever. That leads to more connection, more trust, more intimacy. You start having sex more when this happens. When you're honest with your partner. Even you, like an example of vulnerability, going back to that conversation with the I don't know response, a a vulnerable response to her I don't know is like, babe, all right, I don't want to get frustrated because usually I get frustrated when you say I don't know. So I... But, but I really am looking for an answer here because I want us to work together on this. So I don't want to get frustrated, um, but I do want to help you find an answer. Do you mind if I help you? So see how that is a level of vulnerability because you're catching yourself in the frustration and you're sharing that with your partner. Hey, I know usually I get really frustrated. I'm starting to feel it right now, but I don't want to do that this time. I want to stop that habit of being frustrated and reacting with frustration when you say, I don't know. And instead, I want to be more mindful of helping you get answers because we are on the same team. And I have to remind myself of that and I have to remind you of that. See how that's vulnerability, but also leadership? It's like a man who says that, it's like, whoa, okay. This guy knows what he's doing. And not that you always have to know what you're doing. But like you're admitting, you're knowing what you, (laughs) this is funny because you're like admitting, you're assertive and confident in admitting you don't know what you're doing. Right? It's like, all right, I know I, I know I get frustrated here. Typically, I don't want to be that man anymore. I don't want to react to my frustration anymore. So I'm going to stay calm here and present with you and do my best to do that and help you find an answer. Because I love you. Okay? Bam. That's assertive vulnerability while still not knowing the answer. It's in the tone. It's in the self-awareness. It's in the vulnerability opening up to her and being honest around how you're feeling right now and what your intentions are. Okay? So vulnerability isn't like, "Uh, I don't know, I'm really sad and I just like need you. Like that's like that's not vulnerability and that's what a lot of people think it is. People think it's just like you crying, like having an emotional release and no, it doesn't have to be coming across as this weakness. It can come across as a strength. Okay? You have the power to do that. So practice it. And lastly, the last point of confidence is emotional well-being. So this is having a positive self-image, like self-overall image, and a healthy relationship with your sexuality. Um, When you are in a place where you're feeling good about yourself and you're able to, to process your emotions and not just immediately react on your emotions, as I just talked about in the previous example, then you have healthy emotional well-being, right? You're learning about yourself. You're giving yourself grace. You know, you're, you're taking the weight off your back. You're taking the pressure off of sex. You're telling yourself, hey, like, dude, I, like, here I am feeling like I need to know all the answers. I don't. It's okay if I don't. But how can I get some? How can I find them if I don't know them and I need them? You know, it's like this self-resiliency. It's finding answers, It's knowing that you can find the answers even when you feel like you can't. Reminding yourself, I can. I'm in control of my own life. I'm in control of whether or not I react to my emotional state. I'm in control. And when you reiterate that to yourself in your head or verbally out loud if you need to, that gives you such a power, guys. It's insane. Because I see way too many guys like, oh, I can't do this. I can't blah, blah, blah. I can't blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can. You just haven't practiced enough. Or yeah, you can. You just haven't tried a different technique. Yeah, you can. You're just not doing it consistently enough. But don't tell yourself you can't. Because when you tell yourself you're in control, you start noticing control and ways of gaining more control throughout your entire life. 
when you're a man who truly feels like, I don't know the answer right now, but I will find it, but I can find it. When you react that way to life in general, then when it comes to your sex life, you're, you feel like you can figure anything out and you can feel like, and you do feel like you're in control because there are so many more things you're in control over than what you're not. And sometimes if you focus and zoom in on what you're, you don't feel control over, like let's say you're, you, let's say you're experiencing erectile dysfunction, you may just zoom in on that and be like, oh, when it comes to my sex life, I don't have control. And that cripples you. That makes you fall apart emotionally. And then you fall apart in your communication or you avoid it and stand back from it. So don't let one part of your sex life define who you are. Understand why you're lacking control in that area and also reinforce the areas you do have control over because there are many. All right, so I hope this helped you. Uh, This is a, like I said, a highly requested topic, especially for my sex meditations. That's why I created meditation around it. And then I was like, oh, let me make a podcast too. I haven't talked about this in a while. So um, take that in and practice it, guys. There's a lot in here. I gave a couple examples that you can really use. And just, you know, if if it doesn't match your situation entirely, go back and find a way to match it to your situation and use the same framework. All right. But... That's it. Have an amazing morning, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I hope this episode helped you. If it did, I would love for you to leave me an iTunes review. It would mean the world to me. You can also screenshot your favorite episodes and tag me on Instagram at Steph Kanowski. And before I go, remember, your sex life is as good as you make it out to be. Until next time.